Hello there. I just wanted to do a quick unboxing and comparison of the Moto X Pure Edition in leather. I saw a lot of great unboxings yesterday, but a lot of those unboxings had the silicone material model, and I thought it would be a good idea to do one in leather for everyone. I ended up designing a red leather back with a black face and dark accents. And in the days leading up to the device's arrival, I kept reading rave reviews on the silicone-based model. It had me a little nervous that I had made the wrong decision, but after getting this in my hand, I can definitely say that this is very, very nice. I sort of had an idea on what to expect since I had a leather back on the back of my Moto X 2nd Gen, although this time, because of the cross-hatching, the device definitely has more texture, and it feels a little bit more firm. I'm sure all of you guys by now have seen the contents of the box over and over with all of the unboxings online, although one thing I haven't seen mentioned is that the turbocharger actually doesn't come apart this time via USB. The cord and the brick are actually all one solid piece. I vaguely remember Motorola saying that this was due to the extra fast turbocharging technology that was included with this model. For those of you who are wondering about the device's size and how it compares to other phones, I've actually brought a few popular phone models with me here so that I can take a look at the differences in size and screen. First up is the obvious comparison to the Nexus 6. Despite only having a slightly smaller screen size than the Nexus 6, I was amazed on how small the device actually felt in comparison to the Nexus 6. The Moto X definitely does not feel as big in the hand as the Nexus 6 does, and I think it has to do with the device being a little bit narrower and a little shorter. The screens of both devices look remarkably similar, although the Nexus 6 has a little bit more punch, but that's to be expected when you compare AMOLED to LCD. Next up is the Galaxy Note 5. The Note 5 and Moto X are very, very close in size, although I would say that the Galaxy Note 5 is ever so slightly larger. And despite both having curved backs, I definitely like the feel of the Moto X better. I can't say that I like the screen quality better, however, as the Galaxy Note 5 screen really looks much more bright and much more vivid than the Moto X. I'm not sure that I would notice if they were apart, but whenever you put the two devices together like this, you can definitely see the quality in Samsung's displays. Next up is the Moto X 2nd Gen. The second gen Moto X is a lot smaller than the Moto X Pure Edition and you can definitely feel the difference when holding them both in your hand. The second gen Moto X was a little wide itself so the jump from the second to third gen isn't as drastic as one would think. Performance wise the second gen still feels great and you can tell it holds its own up against the third gen. The screen however Despite being an AMOLED display, it does not look quite as nice as the 3rd gen, so you can definitely tell that Motorola stepped it up there. Next up is the good old HTC M9. The M9 really does look very small next to the new Moto X, but despite it looking that way, it really doesn't feel that much smaller in the hand. I always liked HTC's displays, and despite only being a 1080p panel, it definitely holds its own against a lot of today's flagship phones, bar probably Samsung. And finally, the S6 Edge. The S6 Edge has a lot in common with the Galaxy Note 5 as far as display technology, although the Note 5's display is a lot nicer than the S6 Edge. When I put it up against the Moto X, the whites on the Moto X definitely look a lot brighter, and the colors in some places actually look a little better. Even though the S6 is smaller, the Moto X is a much more comfortable phone to feel in the hand. Part of this is because the S6 Edge was never very comfortable to begin with to hold, and the S6 proper was the nicer of the two in the hand. So for those of you wondering, the Moto X feels absolutely fine in the hand. It doesn't feel anywhere near as big as the Nexus 6 despite the screen size, and compared to the smaller phones, it actually feels a lot better. The only phone that I would say that gives it a run for its money in the feel and hand department would be the Galaxy S6 regular. The leather model feels great, but I'm still going to get my hands on a silicone model just so I can do a proper comparison between the two. Now it's time to go put this device through its paces and there'll be a three-piece review on it very soon. Thank you everybody for watching. See you next time.